Our question was, does the A40 pollution reduce lung function in students? Acknowledgements, William Perkin and Ada Lovelace, C of E High Schools, Siona Parak, Zoya Mohammed, Helma Pindoria, Logan Sermon, Max Sermon, Anita Sohili, Ali Al Mutari, Rachel Kachar, Sami Kuzi. Daniel Parvez, Hero, Yusuf Hab, Yasin Hussain, Alex Gubrov, Dal Nabi, and Miss Anita Kapila. Imperial College, Dr. Rebecca Holloway, Worshipful Company of Armors and Brazers, 1000 Grant Money. Overview. We looked at how air pollution affects our lung function using spirometers. We did a lung function test using spirometers every week for five weeks and worked out the mean to, of it to get an average. We measured the air pollution in different parts of our school using a PM sensors and a Grey Wolf multi-gas sensor. Our aims of this project were to see whether the pollutants from the cars affect us, to expand our knowledge on this topic and to expand our communication and teamwork skills. Background information. We've been studying lung function and gas and particulate pollution with Dr. Rebecca Holloway from Imperial College. We have tested the air in and around the school for both harmful gas and different particulate sizes. Which are 1.0 micrometers, 2.5 micrometers and 10 micrometers because of our school's proximity to the A40. The first two measurements of particulate sizes are the most harmful because they are the ones that can penetrate into the alveoli and cause swelling and a range of diseases. Method, equipment, Grey Wolf multi-gas sensor, electronic spirometer and particulate sensor. To measure the levels of airborne pollutants, we used the multi Grey Wolf gas sensor that detected nitric oxide, sulfur dioxide, and carbon dioxide. This device was used at different locations on each of the floors inside and outside of the school. The levels were recorded on a spreadsheet. We used a particulate sensor to measure PM 1.0, 2.5, and 10.0 in the same places. To measure our lung function, we were given a spirometer which was plugged into specific computers using software called Winspiro when we wrote in our details and then blew into the reusable tube. We recorded the mean FEV1 slash FEC ratio over five weeks. Conclusion. In conclusion, the results from the Grey Wolf multi-gas sensor and the particulate sensor show that the ground floor contained a greater number of particulates in comparison to the other three floors combined. There was little ozone and nitrogen dioxide in all the floors. In addition, the sulfur dioxide was roughly the same at around 400 micrograms per meters cubed. When we measured the lung function with a spirometer, we found that all of the elite scientists were within the normal range. Therefore, the results show that the elite scientists' lungs are not harmed by the fumes from the A40 as much as we expected. Evaluation. What went well in the experiment is we successfully used professional equipment to measure types of gas, particulates in air, as well as our lung function. This included the Grey Wolf multi-gas sensor, which was donated by IRIS, Institute for Research in Schools, the particulate sensor to measure the particulates in the air, as, as well as the spirometer me to measure our lung function. We also achieved the element of fairness due to the fact that we measured the gases and particulates twice in two different groups. Additionally, we worked cooperatively and were consistently focused at the task at hand. Contrastingly, we encountered faults and difficulties, as many do. The first time we measured the gases and particulates, we were not successful as we weren't specific and detailed enough. For example, we had missed out the gases' names that were not detected, so this made the results unclear. As a result of this, we had to redo the experiment. On our second try, we had reliably and accurately measured every detail. When measuring lung capacity, we struggled slightly as the process of taking the measurements requires a lot of lung power and exhaling every bit of breath we had. What went well with the lung capacity is that we recorded our results consistently over a period of five weeks and we had been used to using lots of power due to the spirometers. Finally, we'd like to thank Dr. Holloway for all her hard work and time with us over the last year. Iris for lending us the Grey Wolf gas sensor, Miss Capilla for organising the project and the worshipful company of armors, armorers and Brit Baziers for giving us the grant of a thousand pounds. Class, 
question. So you think if you took it for longer periods of time, because I'd sense it would have some impact, doesn't it, the A40 on your breathing? So were you shocked to get... You were, you were, were you shocked to get no result? Uh, yeah, we were quite shocked because um, the proximity to the A40, seeing as it like released loads of um, uh, harmful gases, so it was like quite shocking to see that there was no effect. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what do you reckon? Um, I think it was to do with the design of the building because on one side of the building there were windows, but on the side that there was the A40, there were no windows. So I think it was to do with the design of the building that uh, prevented gases from... Uh, gases and harmful particulates. So and what about the limit? The what about the limit on the day? And uh, the limit. So, um, so uh, in certain parts of the uh, the school site, uh, we weren't allowed to spend time there for too long uh, because of the harmful gases and particulates. So, I think that really helped. Right. We're only allowed two hours a day outside. Goodness. Okay, so they're already bearing that in mind. That was a fantastic presentation. Let's give them another thank you. Well done.